Welcome you back to MS of the session. So last time uh, we had uh, seen uh, uh, some of the MS of the session uh, basics. Uh, so we had uh, the build the requisites uh, for embedded of system testing. Then the marketing driver, course objectives, the testing, and uh, what are the learning outcomes. And uh, we had a great session about uh, what are the different sessions we are going to have. There are planned uh, three sessions of the Android software of Android system. Okay, so today's uh, session I am going to touch upon uh, some of the Android system basics and uh, uh, Android system testing uh, what we have uh, discussed last time. Okay, so what is embedded system? Uh, there are two kinds of system. One is a general purpose system. The other one is the embedded system. So how they differentiate? Uh, okay, the general uh, purpose system is uh, organized set of working functionalities, uh, doing one or more tasks according to a fixed program or some set of rules. So it's intended for uh, general purpose. Like uh, general computing, uh, calculation, or any of the basic development, etc. Uh, for example, uh, we use the desktop, laptop, for our general purpose uh, activities, or any other uh, computing system such as uh, uh, server, uh, mainframe, uh, computer, etc. Uh, these are large uh, computing systems. So these are all categorized under general. Uh, uh, computer system or general purpose system. So now coming to embedded system. So an embedded system is a standalone system customized for a specific purpose. So it is intended for doing certain functionality only. So unlike a general uh, desktop or laptop system, so this is meant for doing certain application or certain feature or certain uh, target based system or uh, some computing or uh, uh, anything other than uh, specific uh, anything other than general purpose, so that is what MS uh, system is. So unlike a PC, MS system is not designed uh, to be programmed by an end user. Uh, Whereas a PC, a personal computer, will have a, a programming capability uh, intended to be used by uh, the same user, whereas embedded system is specific. Embedded system always runs uh, a fixed application, uh, what I said is intended uh, uh, functions or features, meaning that there is a fixed uh, set of features with the amount of application which is intended for embedded system to run. So that is why it is a, a, a fixed application it is meant uh, for example we take uh, there are a range of uh, applications uh, for embedded systems uh, there could be uh, space systems or aerospace uh, military applications automobile like uh, ECU uh, electronic control unit uh, which fits in the various parts of the car then we have home appliances uh, something like uh, uh, TV, refrigerator, etc. Uh, we have a telecom, uh, something like uh, PDF, mobile, tablet, uh, and uh, we have entertainment system uh, such as set of set of box. And uh, uh, these are uh, some of the uh, range of embedded uh, embedded system application. Uh, uh, one or the other way, this will have a embedded system. Residing inside, so they are intended to do a specific task. For example, uh, aerospace standard uh, uh, systems uh, will have uh, avionics subsystems meant for uh, flight control or cockpit uh, display systems or uh, brake control or uh, heads up display or uh, flight entertainment, etc. Uh, similarly, we have uh, automobile uh, or automotive standard uh, systems where uh, 
सिस्टम और ब्रेक कंट्रोल यूनिट और कैमरा फ्रंट कैमरा विजन सिस्टम और रिवर्स गेयर मॉनिटरिंग सिस्टम दिस आर सम ऑफ द एग्जांपल एप्लीकेशन रिसाइडिंग विद इन द एमएस सिस्टम ऑफ दिस डोमेन्स सो बेसिकली दिस सिक्स सेवन हाई लेवल डोमेन्स लिस्ट आउट व्हाट आर द पॉसिबल एमएस सिस्टम व्हिच आर गोइंग टू बी यूज्ड इट इन द वेरियस डोमेन Embed system uh, will have multiple uh, subsystems, uh, something like in aerospace or EC sensor, actuator, or any of the interfaces that it uses. So it can be a group of uh, embed subsystems as well. So altogether, it is called as embed system. So an embed system is uh, one that has a uh, hardware with the software embedded in it. It has one of its uh, important components. So Here, embed system means uh, it has uh, all the elements of a uh, uh, piece of uh, box uh, having a uh, uh, certain amount of fixed uh, uh, application running. So, for that application to run, it needs uh, hardware. Uh, uh, suppose a motor uh, needs to be run, uh, which is nothing better, motor hardware, and there is a hardware circuitry. And to drive that uh, hardware circuitry, we need a piece of software. So, that is nothing but embed software. So all this uh, comprises uh, embed system, and uh, it can have a multiple uh, embed system as well. There is nothing but uh, embed system. Okay. So, what are the, the broad level uh, components uh, that are built into embed system? Uh, usually, embed system uh, will have a, a basic uh, a microprocessor or a microcontroller. or okay, a digital signal processor so we will see in the next session uh, uh, what are the microcontrollers you can use and uh, are there any dsp uh, these are all uh, basically specific uh, purpose uh, processor so these processors are very uh, uh, very much heart of the embedded system uh, like uh, uh, we have a microprocessor uh, doing all the logic calculations and everything uh, Generally, microcontrollers are used in the embedded system, uh, which is meant for uh, interfacing the various devices, uh, doing the processing, etc. Uh, accordingly, we have uh, DSPs, uh, which are uh, meant for embedded systems uh, having uh, more uh, sort of uh, calculations or arithmetic or uh, image processing uh, this level of uh, embed system uh, are developed using dsp and after the processor part uh, we have uh, memory uh, which is very important uh, the processor will interact with the memory to get the data or uh, to execute the uh, program or instructions from the memory so memory uh, there are two types uh, in a broader way uh, random access memory and reliable memory ram and rom uh, i will not uh, talk much about ram and rom so this uh, will be discussed uh, in the specifics of uh, embedded systems uh, in a particular like this so we have uh, memory uh, the additional memory such as uh, uh, hard disk uh, uh, dvds Pilgrims or USB stick, etc. So those are all uh, part of the memory. Then we have uh, uh, inputs for the uh, embedded systems. Uh, the inputs could be uh, any scanner input or a digitizer or a mouse or keyboard or uh, user uh, uh, keying in some uh, uh, inputs, uh, which can be analog or digital. Uh, so what are analog and what are display types? Probably we'll touch base uh, when we do the test cases and all that. When we see into the requirement, how it is organized, etc. Uh, embed systems uh, will uh, have to produce outputs. Uh, that means the results. Uh, the results could be an action of uh, what are the inputs the user is interested. The outputs uh, could be a monitor or a printer or driving a motor. 
or uh, displaying uh, some values etc. So this will be part of the output components of the number system. For uh, doing all this uh, we need uh, interfaces, interfaces uh, in the sense which will uh, interact with the number system as well as the external world. Uh, external world could be uh, another device or a user or any other subsystem. So there are various interfaces that are used. Uh, for example, Ethernet or uh, uh, network related uh, embedded systems they use it. RS232, which is a asynchronous uh, interface. Typically, uh, the computers will have it uh, to get the log and all that. SPA serial peripheral uh, interface. Then we have uh, I square C. Then uh, all we know about USB. So these are some of the interfaces that the embedded systems uh, use. Some of the embedded system elements are like uh, the processor part, the memory, the input interface, the output interface, and uh, the interface devices. Okay. In continuation of that, uh, we have uh, embedded system uh, development environment. How it is going to be developed? Uh, host to target development environment will be used. Uh, host is a typical uh, Windows PC, it will have a connection with the target uh, uh, embedded system. The target will be a typical uh, microcontroller uh, based board. As I said, the microcontroller could be any of the uh, processor or a DSP or anything. Then, uh, once we have this uh, setup uh, available, we use the debugging, that means. Uh, uh, there is a tool uh, which will be used, uh, it is called uh, integrated development environment. Through the tool, uh, we can uh, uh, use the software code, uh, Emirate C or any other program to download to the target board and uh, to test it or to debug it at a development level, we use the IDE environment. So, these are some of the energy system development environment. Uh, so this is a typical uh, embedded system uh, development environment depicted uh, in a simpler way. Uh, as I said, the laptop or desktop is uh, connected to the target system. There is a intermediate uh, probe box uh, which will be used for uh, uh, interacting with the target system uh, that is called usually it is uh, used for JTAG uh, or VDM. Data is the most popular one, which will uh, interface with the target system and provide uh, to the host uh, the needed uh, values or what are the registers or memory or the interfaces, and uh, we can start, stop the program and all that. So this uh, box uh, you can see here will provide that uh, uh, debugging facility to the target. So this is a typical uh, embed system development environment. Okay, so we will uh, see with some of the basic definitions that are used in embed systems. A very elementary definition. Uh, software development life cycle, uh, which is uh, uh, the main uh, framework uh, under which the embed systems uh, are developed. Uh, the life cycles will have different phases, uh, the requirement or the planning phase, then we have a design, then we have implementation that is coding, then we have the verification that is verifying uh, the embedded system. These are some of the typical software development phases and uh, debugging is one of the terms that is used. Uh, is a basically act of attempting to determine the cause of the symptoms or malfunctions detected by testing or by sensitive user complaint. Uh, this is a definition from body physics, one of the embedded technique. So, we use, uh, as I said, uh, debugging to debug uh, the target board 
uh, to see what are the uh, programming uh, issues or any defects, uh, what are the changes that are needed, uh, those sort of information you will be able to do. So these are the development uh, definitions. So these three are the testing definitions like errors, uh, the mistake or uh, uh, when programming uh, from the development team uh, they may introduce a certain failure or a fault, they are nothing but errors. And then uh, we have fault, a bug or defect uh, which could be within the hardware or the software uh, that is part of the embedded system. Uh, the defects are identified through system testing. Then we have a failure, uh, when a fault code is executed, it may lead to incorrect correct result. Failure means uh, uh, after we deploy the embedded systems into the field, uh, it may malfunction or it may not work uh, as expected or the accuracy may not be as per the requirement or the expectation. Those are all will result in a failure. These are some of the embed system definitions uh, that are used. Okay, now coming to programming. So what I told in the earlier slide is that uh, we need a development environment. We need to program it to the target system using uh, certain languages like embedded C or uh, embedded C plus plus etc. So embedded C is a typical uh, language they use. It is uh, very similar to uh, standard C, uh, like the uh, factored programming is uh, possible, and that is the way it is going to be used. And uh, there are some restrictions uh, because of the target hardware, uh, which has the core and data memory restrictions and uh, timing restrictions. So, embedded C will be programmed uh, with these restrictions uh, considered because the target system will have a defined uh, a memory or uh, uh, defined uh, timing requirement. So, according to that, uh, this P programming will be done. Uh, and in addition, we have embedded programming uh, special uh, features uh, uh, dedicated for uh, target hardware. Uh, target hardware, uh, as I said, uh, microcontroller uh, also. And uh, those features uh, like uh, register usage, uh, memory uh, related operations. They are all specific to embedded systems. So, these are all part of the features that are used under embedded And I depicted here uh, embedded C environment. Uh, there are two portions uh, which, are, which is a differentiator. Uh, the first one is a standard C, or they use it in a general uh, computer like a PC. The below one is a embedded C used on the target based development or testing. So, you can see the difference in terms of this C code compiled in a PC and the PC, PC is nothing but x86 based personal computer. It will generate the object file and the object files are linked using the C library and the linked output uh, will be an executable that will be executed on the same basis to generate the output. Uh, this is a standard C and uh, we have embedded C environment where uh, C source code is uh, uh, compiled, uh, cross compiled. What I mean cross compile means the cross compiler will have compiling instructions specific to the target board. The target board is nothing but having the microcontroller not the x86, it could be uh, any of the Motorola or uh, ARM or the free scale uh, PI based microcontroller. So, see to that uh, there are uh, cross compilers, uh, for example, a GNU compiler is one of the industry standard uh, compiler uh, which generates object files and uh, those object files are uh, linked with the library and it will be. Uh, generating an uh, executable or binary file uh, which will be burnt or it will be programmed into the target board. Uh, also we have uh, along with the embedded uh, C, uh, there are few uh, programming uh, areas something like a bootloader or boot code uh, which are usually developed in uh, assembly language. 
So there is the assembler along with the compilation, uh, which will generate the uh, assembly output, uh, which will also be linked along with the library. Uh, and it will be the uh, generate the uh, uh, executable or binary output. This will be deployed under the target board, and the target board is ready for uh, uh, deployment or the field uh, execution. This is a typical MLC environment. Okay. So, anything on a specific kind of system basics can uh, actually see as we progress on the and the software application. Okay. In the last session, uh, we have discussed about the embedded software uh, testing basics. So, what is testing uh, processor for exercising or evaluating the system? Uh, by manual means or automated means. Uh, in order to verify that, it satisfies the, uh, the required functionality. Uh, the role of testing uh, verification and validation determine whether the system meets the requirements, import the confidence of the M1 request, provide insight into the software development process. So, why we need testing? So, because the developer could introduce some of the overhead issues, uh, certain bugs are very easier to find uh, during testing than a development. Uh, post release debugging is very expensive, so we cannot afford to release the product uh, right away from development, so that should be uh, tested. The bugs in the development tools uh, we can use for development. Uh, best way to understand the uh, and present the product uh, to the user or the customer is to test it and report as a part. And uh, we do not want to complain, uh, get complaints from customers uh, identifying the defects. The defects. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had an analysis on uh, cost of uh, embedded software defects. So, costs will increase uh, as we find the defects uh, in different cases. So, that the cost will be less if we find a problem or if in the design or the requirement. And uh, as we go along the different phases of the embedded uh, software system, the cost will uh, double or it will uh, uh, multiple. Okay. There are a few elements uh, which are uh, going to be mandatorily used for embedded software system, the planning, uh, which talks about the uh, plans of uh, development verification and configuration. And there are technical inputs for embedded uh, software uh, as a testing uh, activity, uh, the system requirement or the software requirement, system design or the software design in the code. Then we have test case procedure, then we have uh, tips. Then we have the results altogether uh, the correct technical input for uh, saying that the product is very effective uh, for the Android software system. And then we have, of course, the uh, guidelines and standards uh, which are uh, need to be used for the development of all the above articles. We have a uh, testing process uh, defined uh, specifically uh, test planning. Uh, which talks about uh, so what is my test uh, um, plan, I mean what sort of a uh, test case I am going to have, it, what sort of a standard I use, so what is the process I follow, etc. So, uh, once this is laid out, laid out then we have uh, the corresponding uh, specification, we will have test case procedures and environment, how the test uh, will be developed and tested. Then once the specification and the cases, procedures, scripts or environment is ready, we are going to have the execution, test execution. Test execution uh, could be manually done or it could be automated in terms of running through that or script. Then we have a test coverage uh, as a result of the test execution and we will have a report, a test report having uh, the output of the Test execution, test log, or evidence in the output. Okay. Now coming to 
embedded software testing uh, uh, the environment how the setup uh, will be easier Uh, testing the setup, we will have uh, something like this where we have a, a laptop or a desktop and uh, it is interfaced with the target system. We have target system uh, being an uh, embedded uh, system which is under test. So, we will have, have, we'll have an interface uh, such as uh, using an USB or an internet or CAN, etc. So, which will have the uh, test uh, execution uh, interface with the target system. Uh, what I mean to say is, uh, you have uh, some of the testing uh, driven from the system uh, desktop, uh, and the testing data that are required to enter into the system target system will be done with the uh, USB or uh, Ethernet interface. And uh, for uh, test uh, Given a system at the desktop or the user level, so you will have uh, tools or uh, scripts. Uh, tools uh, in the industry uh, use that such as RTRT, or LDRA. So these are basically some of the tools that are used. Along with that, we can also have a scripting uh, mechanism, uh, which basically uh, triggers some of the inputs that are required uh, for the specific uh, embedded system. The inputs will uh, trigger uh, the, the input data uh, what is needed for a specific functionality and it will uh, produce the output. The output also can be monitored or viewed to the same interface. So, this is something like a uh, interface hooked for the embedded system from the PC perspective and uh, that interface will be used as an input as well as the output. Okay, now coming to the embedded system having uh, uh, user features or uh, something like uh, uh, as a black box, so uh, how it can be triggered. Uh, well, like uh, uh, as I said, uh, we can read the data from the desktop as well as there is an alternate uh, mechanism to hook into the embedded system. Uh, this will be the nearest uh, end user environment. Uh, something that is called as a test panel, uh, also called as a breakout box. Box. So what we do is uh, uh, see embedded system uh, will have a specific application running all the time, uh, and uh, certain data will not be realistic. So when it is running in the field only, it will uh, have the realistic input from the user perspective. But within the lab environment or the embed system testing setup, how are you going to feed it? So there is a mechanism uh, it's called a test panel. The test panels uh, will have a typical uh, uh, discrete uh, inputs, uh, analog inputs such as potentiometers, etc. And also there are the test hooks uh, which will feed uh, some of the internet messages or the to see interface with the So, to produce some of the realistic values, we use the test panel. And the same test panel data can be uh, recorded or uh, viewed as a result uh, after the embedded system uses that in the uh, desktop environment. So, this will be the uh, debugging as well as the system uh, embedded system testing uh, setup. And this will be the, the test panel to target system will be the most likely end to end system it is called as end to end uh, embedded system uh, testing setup. So, this is the typical setup uh, that is uh, used. Okay, so once we have the setup, uh, we know, I mean, uh, we have seen. Uh, how tests should be uh, approached, how tests should be done. So there are, uh, as I said in the previous system, uh, different uh, test methods or the level that are used. Uh, the typical ones uh, I will uh, uh, tell uh, acceptance testing, the user level acceptance testing, system testing, functional and non functional, 
then we have uh, integration testing and uh, we have component testing. So uh, there are uh, four uh, testing uh, methods or testing level. Uh, one is acceptance system, system testing, integration testing, and compound testing. Which one we will uh, discuss? Acceptance testing or user testing, user acceptance testing is also called as. So this is based on the user specification. That means uh, given the MS system or the end product to a user, how he will view it. So that is what uh, this testing uh, will talk about. So basically, there are certain critical requirements or the critical acceptance criteria which need to be passed. So these are all part of the acceptance system. Those uh, requirements. Then uh, important key features or functionalities. Uh, suppose you take a mobile operating system. Uh, the important uh, or key features uh, generally what they specify in the requirement or the uh, specification is uh, it should have a, a conference call. It should uh, uh, enable uh, the Wi-Fi. It should have Bluetooth. It should have um, uh, internet browsing capabilities. Uh, uh, Photo, video, audio recording, so many features. So, those are all uh, some of the user specifications uh, which will be tested again under the acceptance testing. Uh, usually, acceptance testing will not be a tedious one, it will be a PDR process. So, minimum uh, uh, set of requirements of the features uh, that will be part of this. Uh, so the completion uh, objective uh, will be the Time criteria is the criteria of the acceptance system. Uh, usually, we tested on the field or uh, uh, with the help of the user or against the user specification. So, to evaluate whether it is fit to use or it can be used by the uh, user or deployed into the market. And uh, the acceptance testing uh, test uh, will validate uh, business functional requirement. So, what it is. Uh, uh, what system is supposed to do? We should uh, validate. So these are some of the uh, key parameters under uh, user acceptance. That is the first uh, level of testing. Then we have uh, system testing, which is the next level of uh, embedded uh, system testing. Here in embedded system testing, we have the entire embedded system as an integrated unit with complete interfaces involved, meaning that the entire end product will be tested as a system. So, as I said, the end to end system setup will be used, and this end to end system will be used for system testing. The end to end system will have all the features and the functionality and the interfaces that are required uh, with the help of which uh, this uh, embedded system will be completely tested. So, uh, look at this uh, what uh, I was mentioning is uh, there is a test panel which will give the realistic uh, input uh, against the uh, target system. So, uh, this will be the primary system testing uh, mechanism for the user. And uh, the system testing uh, will have an uh, actual environment where uh, uh, how the uh, system will be used uh, in the field basically. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to use the, some of the components that are uh, within the car. So it will be actually deployed within the car uh, with the uh, test inputs or the environment inputs coming from the car. Uh, it could be uh, speed of the car while uh, driving the car, uh, etc. Uh, it may not be enough uh, to have the actual environment uh, in the field. So what will happen is some of the requirements uh, we may have to uh, break the uh, the embedded uh, system box. Or the embedded system uh, elements uh, that is uh, called as open box type of test. 
for example uh, uh, some of the capability requirements uh, in terms of uh, uh, performance and memory performance or speed performance uh, need to be tested uh, by opening the android system lock uh, which may result in uh, validating some of the implemented code or uh, uh, going through the code or debugging the code so these uh, are uh, categorized as uh, uh, open box type of testing. The system testing is also called as functional testing, where all the functions uh, of the embedded system will be tested. So, that is about the second level of our testing. We have the next uh, method called integration testing. What do we do in integration testing? So, basically, integration testing. Uh, we will have integration of sub modules of the system under test and uh, which will evaluate the interaction of the uh, all these modules. So, basically we will have suppose uh, 10 modules all these 10 modules they are called sub modules will have to be interacted uh, will have to be integrated then it will be evaluated against uh, each modules how they interact uh, how are the data or the uh, uh, some of the signals are interacted and then based on module all this will be part of the integration test. Integration testing could be done uh, at uh, uh, two approaches one is a top down approach uh, top down uh, integration uh, where high level uh, procedures or requirements are addressed first and then low level that means from the uh, requirements then to design then to code. I will be attacked uh, in order to complete the testing. Uh, like uh, the modules uh, at a higher level, it is uh, reviewed. Uh, next uh, method of the integration uh, we do is uh, bottom up. Why? Because a top down approach may not be enough uh, to complete uh, uh, the requirement based testing. So, we may have to uh, do some of the unit level. Uh, Integration. I think uh, uh, some logical uh, units only need to be validated with us. Uh, we will uh, begin with the uh, unit level functions, uh, low level, lowest possible uh, units are uh, first uh, integrated, then they are grouped into the next level, etc. So, uh, towards the higher level, uh, these all these uh, units are uh, tested. So, this is a uh, so basic method of integration testing. We have seen acceptance user user level testing, system testing, integration testing. The last one is the unit testing or the component level testing. So what do we do in component level testing? The smallest units or the smallest functionality or the things of the Android system. Uh, will be tested as a unit. Uh, as I said, there are uh, 10 modules, sub modules. Each module, sub modules will have uh, uh, number of functionalities or number of units. Uh, it may have uh, 5, 1, 2, 10, whatever it is. All this will be tested uh, as a unit. So, typically, a core function uh, procedure uh, will be called as a unit under test. So, that unit alone will be tested uh, in terms of. Uh, input uh, what is the functionality it can address and what is the output it produces. Uh, also, we have uh, coverage aspects coming under uh, uh, units that means we need to cover uh, from uh, different perspective, uh, it is nothing but the structural coverage. In the, in the industry, it is very important to have a structural coverage reported and it should be 100 percent, that means uh, the 100 percent of the uh, functionalities or the features have to be covered and the coverage could be done uh, with the help of uh, statements that is implemented statements or uh, the logical uh, branching of the unit or uh, the MCDC which is nothing but modified condition or decision condition coverage that is if L, while loop and uh, PSS uh, for loops all this will be tested and uh, this will be used as a coverage. The tools that are used for unit testing basically are NDRA and cast. 
ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುಲಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದ ಯೂನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟಿಪಿಕಲ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನಾಲಿಟಿ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ for us to completely test uh, at one method that is the uh, unit level or uh, integration level or system level. So we may have to do a uh, credit based uh, testing. That means uh, suppose uh, unit testing uh, we are able to test uh, with a coverage of 80%. So there is a 20% uh, gap. That 20% gap we can take the credit from integration testing or the system testing. So these three basically they follow across the industry to have a 100% coverage. And of course before deployment and uh, uh, fitness, uh, the fitness of the product, uh, user acceptance test will be used. Okay. Uh, so these are some of the testing methods of level is used. now we have a categories of uh, testing now once we have a testing how it is broadly categorized once we have a test setup uh, available uh, uh, the test can be done in two ways one is a black box test other one is a white box test so as i said uh, the black box uh, test uh, will be based on external specification uh, without knowledge of how the system is constructed that is you don't have to bother about uh, the individual unit or the integrated module is simply uh, embedded uh, system, uh, embedded system uh, unit so all we have to uh, see is as a black box how it can be triggered with a different uh, test input and how we can expect the test output typically as a black box so the embedded system uh, as a unit completely with the test uh, for example uh, a telephone instrument Uh, you take it uh, as a black box uh, how we are going to test it is uh, we connect it to the, uh, the telephone uh, wire or telephone jack then we will see whether ringtone is coming then we will dial up some numbers then we will uh, pause, redial with the help of the buttons that are relating to the instrument so we use as a black box the complete uh, telephone instrument so this is under the black box test uh there is a next uh, type of uh, testing uh, a test this is a white box here uh, we need to know the internal uh, logics or the structure uh, how it is organized uh, how it is designed this is basically driven from the software design or the system design of the embedded uh, system uh, what i mean is uh, there are different uh, groups logical groups of the embedded uh, product uh, modules uh, which are part of the embedded system those will be tested uh, usually uh, something like uh, we have 10 uh, design modules which are responsible for 10 different functions or 10 uh, different features as i said uh, when i uh, take up the phone hooked with a telephone jack it should be a dial tone uh, the dial tone uh, the ring tone uh, how it comes uh, will be responsible uh, by some of the uh, features of the some of the functions that will be uh, embedded uh, system those features will be separately addressed in the white box uh, as a individual unit so we will just uh, in the white box or this method usually it will be logical uh, testing or logical one uh it could be uh uh a development environment also we can use it for white box where uh, uh, some of the uh, 
lowest uh, possible uh, requirements of the functionality such as uh, device drivers or uh, memory or uh, a target board uh, registers. Uh, we may not be able to see it at a black box. What we are going to do is uh, we will uh, use the white box method where we use the debugger. With the help of the debugger, we will monitor the memory or the register. We will display the values and uh, we will uh, see it whether it is giving uh, the intended output. So that is how it works. Yeah. Uh, the next uh, testing type uh, is called uh, regression testing. So, what do we do in the regression testing? So, basically, when we have the product uh, uh, done. Uh, with all these uh, testing methods, so which may result in uh, so what will happen is uh, these testing methods will result in some failure. Suppose or some changes may happen in terms of fixing the uh, failure. So what will happen is it needs to be retested. So how it will be retested is uh, uh, using the regression test. That means uh, given a back, uh, given a black box or given a white box embedded system. Uh, we we will basically uh, address those tests which are failed uh, because those tests which are failed earlier uh, are supposed to pass now uh, because those failures are reported and those failures are being uh, uh, bug fixed. So all we need to do is uh, we will uh, re execute. So we will not uh, change the test approach or we will not uh, modify the test case of our design. What we will do is we will simply run those tests. On the target board or on the ML system, which is having the fixed next version of the software. So, we use a method called regression testing. So, testing after changes have been made to the ML software to ensure that no unwanted things were That means, apart from whatever the fixes that are required, there should not be any additional defects. The changes could be due to Earlier stages uh, defect or any improvement in terms of like memory or speed, they would all modify. Uh, the changes uh, need not be resulting in any of the requirement changes. The changes uh, could be from the failures of the earlier stages. So all these will uh, come under regression. And uh, that is all about uh, the index system testing and the test methods. And uh, the types of testing that we use in the industry. The next session uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, uh, test case design and procedures. Uh, 